side this morning. How many of you are glad to be in the church this morning? Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, on the end of the year, last year, you know, after Pastor Sam preached, and the title was Peace Above All. And I was sitting down there and I got so excited, I told Pastor Sam, said, I need to get a slot in January because I'm continuing on with what he has started. Peace above all. You know, during this time of pandemics and things are so uncertain that, you know, above everything else, how many of us believe that we need the peace of God? Amen. Amen. See, the peace of God is God himself. Now, let's open our Bible to the book of... <laughs> <laughs> see the picture in the book of in the book of John chapter 14 uh, verse 27 uh, maybe we can pull back the picture you know I was just trying to put a title trying to get the scenery peace above all most of the time when we think about peace we are always thinking about something that's quiet by the seaside nobody you know go to the mountains you know you you and the nature alone you and with the birds you know most of us we think of peace is the absence of trouble peace is the absence of those irritated people you know and <laughs> and you get the point all right and then I saw this picture, you know, I saw this picture, you know, they were just, I mean, look at the age in the first place. Yeah, you don't get youngster and then put peace above all, they'll be fighting with one another. All right, so I believe that the picture speaks itself. You know, all these are like overcomer. They have gone through different seasons in their life, different difficulties, different level, you know, but above all, at the end of the day, you want peace. Amen? Alright, let's go to John, book of John, chapter 14, verse 27. Now, Jesus said that peace I leave with you, my... I better read here, too small. Alright, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. You see that this is our inheritance. Everybody say inheritance. Alright, because this is just the last week before Jesus go to the cross, you know, to be crucified, died, and buried, and rose again. All right, so basically that he is giving us an inheritance. Every believer must have the peace of God because it's yours. It's up to you to receive it or not, to use it or not. All right? Not as the world gives do I give to you. So Jesus acknowledged that in order that the world can give us peace. Now, in the book of John, if we cross, you know, if we uh, <clears throat> do what Jesus meant, I mean, what Jesus meant is found in John chapter 16, verse 33. He said that the peace that I give you, you know, not as the world gives you, because the world will give you trouble. Can somebody say amen? So it's just going to be a temporary peace, you know, but at the end of the day, it's still trouble. But when Jesus gives us a peace, there's no trouble. Can somebody say amen? All right? Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstances and give you courage and strength for every challenge. So, you know, the peace of God that God has given us, you know, that it becomes courage, it becomes strength, that you can challenge any circumstances. Later on, you know, as we go along, you'll see it. All right? Now, how powerful is the peace of God? It's very powerful. Remember when the disciples were in the boat, in the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 35 onward, verse 36. Now when they have left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him, and a great windstorm arose. Everybody said great windstorm. All right, arose. And so there was a windstorm and the wave beats into the boat so it was already feeling. But he was in the stern asleep on, on a pillow and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And verse 39, Then he arose and rebuked. What did he rebuke? The windstorm or the wind? Come on. The windstorm, he rebuilt the windstorm or he rebuilt the wind? The wind, right? Not the windstorm. 
See, the windstorm is the symptom, but the root is the wind. And it, Jesus said, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great, there was a great calm. Every situation, every problem that you and I go through, we may see the symptom, but God sees the roots of it. That's why sometimes, you know, we cannot treat the symptom. We have to treat the roots. Only God is specialized in it. Can somebody say amen? You know, whatever windstorm that you are facing, there is always the answer because Jesus knows how to go to the roots of the problem and settle the problem for you and I. Amen? And so Jesus said, peace, be still. You know, so if you have windstorm in your life, you know, as you continue on in 2022, let this day be the last day of your windstorm. Amen? Let this day be a beginning of the peace of God in your life. Can somebody say amen? Not only for, not only for 2022, but for the rest of your life. Can somebody say amen? Amen? You know, the peace of God, you know, can defeat, you know, problems, anxiety, and fear in our life. When we do not have the peace of God, it can destroy us. In the book of Job chapter 3, verse 24, verse 25, and verse 26, For the thing which I greatly fear comes upon me, and the thing which I am afraid has come upon me. I am not at peace, or not at peace, nor am I quiet, for I am not at rest, and yet trouble still comes. Now, if you understand this verse, Things already happened to Job in chapter 1, in chapter 2. Hello? All right? So Job didn't know what hits him. Then Job had the revelations. Job said, for the things which I greatly fear has come upon me. You see that your fear, you know, and what you're afraid of, the enemy will study you. See, God didn't say, you know, that Satan, you can do this to him. But God only told Satan, you know, I just put my, I just cannot take his life. That's all. The rest is up to the tactics of the enemy. Amen? How can God, you know, tell Satan, you know, do not take his life and give him the method how to how to deal with Job. Hello? So there is what we call familiar spirit. What you fear and what you are afraid of, that's where it's an open door. So this is what Job said. The things that I greatly fear has come upon me and the things that I am afraid has come upon me. But when you have the peace of God, you will not be afraid. Amen? When you have the peace of God, you will not fear. Because it's the courage, it's the strength, that everything is still in God's control. Amen? You know that even if you read the book of Job, how many of you have read through the book of Job? Only five. Well, some of you are afraid that things like what happened to Job will happen to you. No, no, it will not happen to you. All right? Basically, if you like, how many of you like to read the book of Proverbs? All right. It's the book of wisdom, right? How many of you like to read the book of Ecclesiastes? All right, everything under the sun, under the sun, you know, it's nothing new. You know, it's a really, it's the, you know, it's the, basically, Ecclesiastes is just a, the human wisdom more towards than spiritual wisdom. And the book of Job is actually, these three books are the books of wisdom. You know, so you can get wisdom by observation. You can get wisdom directly from God. You can get wisdom from other people's experience or even your own, you know, school of hard knocks. That you will not repeat the same mistake. So this is called the books of wisdom. So I read through, you know, Job this whole week. You know, just read through one session, you know, trying to understand the conversation that Job's and the friends were having. And then, you know, so basically what it is, is that if you want to counsel somebody, make sure you have the right answer. 
Not the right statement. You can quote scriptures, but it doesn't sit in. It's still the same like Job's friend trying to counsel Job. In the end, you know, <laughs> in the end, they had a, such, a, such a big debate. That's why God told the friends, He says that you did not represent me well. Even though you might say all the right things, but you are not representing me. Hello? Just like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, you know, they can quote scriptures, but it doesn't sit in. How many of you understand where I'm coming from? Amen? You know, and so that's why Job rejected. Job kept on saying that I'm righteous, you know, because your answer did not sit right with me. So I'm not minister too. So at the end of the, you know, and so after they talked for many, many chapters, then God told everybody to keep quiet. And so God took Job and go for a national geography tour. <laughs> because Job was so preoccupied with his own problem, you know, that he forget that God has a bigger picture. And so God said, you know, you know my job, my job is, you know, I show you this natural geography, then it will help you to understand that I'm still in control. Amen? And so the peace, you know, that God has for us is able to destroy fear and afraid. Even Job's friend, you know, have the answer in the book of Job, chapter 22, chapter 22, verse 21. Now you and submit yourself to him, agree with God and be conformed to his will and be at peace. That means that when you are at peace with God, in this way you will prosper and great good will come to you. How many of you want goods to come to you? Amen. I mean, this is true. This is, you know, this is a truth that the, the friend was saying. He said that, you know, that submit to God and make peace with him and good will come to you. Amen. All of us wants the goods to come to us. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Now, how do we get the peace of God? Now, let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1. Now, Luke chapter 2, I believe. Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Now, these were the angels, you know, and the, and the multitudes of the heavenly host praising God and saying, verse 14, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So this is the proclamation that, you know, that the angels say, Glory to God in the highest. So what happened is that peace on earth. All right? So basically, you know that the peace is going to be here on earth. And so the peace, you know, that is for you and I. Can somebody say amen? Amen, because we all need the peace of God. You know, God knows us better than we know ourselves. And He knows that we need the peace because it can help us to overcome Problems, troubles, afraid, fear, anxiety, doubts, unbelief. You know, we need the peace of God. Tell your neighbor, say, I need the peace of God. Hallelujah. Now, what is peace? Now, definition of peace, you know, Sam pronounces it as Irene, but I pronounce it as Irene. But it's the same, all right? Irene, any Irene here? <laughs> All right. Now, peace, you know, from, you know, from the root word, Iro. Iro means to join together, to tie together into a whole, to bind together in one accord, or that means that to be back in order. All right, that's peace, to be in order. Now, how many of you, 
When you drive on the road, when the, there's no law, when people just break the law, do you still have the peace? You would not have the peace. I remember years ago when we were in America. Now, in America, we drive on the right side of the road, all right, because left side of the seat, so we'd have to drive on the right side of the road. And so, for us Malaysians, you know, we are driving on the left side of the road all this time, and so it's so habitual, so in, you know, so that it's so automatic, we we'll turn our heads, you know, at the, at the usually right or left first, all right? So anyway, there was two times in the States where I was driving. There's one, one time that I drove, you know, a lady, a Jamaican lady to go to a store to buy grocery as well as I did my own. And so on the way back, I came out from the supermarket, I turned, it was a one-way street, and suddenly all the cars were approaching me. <laughs> so I was thinking, what's wrong? You know, why all these people are coming against me? <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I'm, I, I think I'm right, you see. And then this lady started to scream. She said, David! <laughs> you know? Hey, we, are, we are on the wrong, on the wrong side of the road. I mean, wrong directions, you know. Oh, you know, so it was like, are we, you know, is the peace is all thrown out of the window. Yeah, I think it happened another time. I think my wife was in it. You know, so same, only two times, you know. So it is like out of order. All right, so peace means order. Just like shalom, you know, just like somebody called you know, probably they quote from Sister Sharini. Oh, you become famous for this shalom. <laughs> nothing missing, nothing broken. You know, unbroken change, all right? So, basically, shalom means, you know, that peace be with you. All right? That means that you are made complete, you are made whole, you have been restored. It was just like back to original. Basically, that's what it is. You know, so when you make a Jew, you say shalom el, shalom elahem. That means peace be upon you. So they like to say that, Shalom Elohim. If you go there, you know, you understand. Unbroken, change, nothing missing, nothing, nothing broken. All right. How many of you would like to have nothing missing, nothing broken? Back to the original pattern that God wants us to have. Hallelujah. If we don't have that, that peace, then we will be out of order. See, our body, soul, and spirit need to be in order with the Spirit of God. If we don't have, that's where we got a lot of problems. You know, for example, uh, let's open our book, the book of James. James chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 2. What causes fight and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desire that battles within you? That means that, you know, that within us there is no order. Body and soul and spirit, you know, is not in order. Can somebody say amen? It's not synchronizing. It's not complete. It's not tied together. It's loose. You know, your body, you know, want, want to do something. Your heart will say nothing. And your mind would, would want to suggest you another, you know, another direction. So it's like, it's like tearing you apart. You desire, but you do not have. So you kill, you convert, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. Amen? That's how quarrel, fights, or happen. Can somebody say amen? Amen, because there's no peace. Now, if you have peace, then everything is in order. Everything harmonizes with the will of God. What you ask, God will give you. Amen? Hello? He's your source. You know, not your father, not your brother, not your sister, you know, not the people around you. You know, look to God as He is your source. He knows you better than you yourself. Hallelujah. Now, how do we know that we have the peace of God? How do we know that we have the peace of God? Firstly, it is that all our sins are forgiven. Do you believe that? Amen. Now let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. 
Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. Hallelujah. You know, so God will save his people from their sin. You know, that's how we get our peace. All our sins are forgiven. You know, the psalmist says that blessed is the one, you know, that whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Amen. How many of you believe that all your sins have already been forgiven? And because of that, that you know today that you have the peace of God. In the book of Romans chapter 5, Therefore, having been justified by faith, all right? Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have the peace of God. Everybody say, I have the peace of God. Through who? Through Jesus Christ. Amen. How we've been justified? We are justified by faith because we believe what Jesus has done for us. That's how we get the peace of God. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. You know that you know that you have the peace of God because all your sins are forgiven. You are righteous today and nobody can condemn you. Nobody can accuse you. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Because you have the right standing because of, you know, that you have been justified by faith. And we have the peace of God through Jesus Christ. One day, the president of America, I believe that he is Abraham Lincoln, on the 4th of July is Independent Days for America. And so, on the Independent Days, they have, you know, the day of presidential pardon. That means that they can pardon, the president can choose you know, anybody that he wants to pardon on that day. And so Abraham Lincoln went to the prison to interview the candidates to be released or to be pardoned. So he went to the first cell and so he asked this man, he said that, do you want to be pardoned? The man said, of course, uh, Mr. President, because I'm a good man. I did nothing wrong, you know. And so, okay, and so the president went to the second person and asked and told him that, uh, do you deserve to be pardoned? And this man said, you know that I'm here for the wrong, you know, somebody else should be here in prison instead of me because I'm being wrongly framed and I actually am a good person. And so the president continued on, visit the third, fourth, fifth, sixth person. Everybody said that they are good. They are good. Or they are righteous. They did nothing wrong. You know, it's not their fault. How many of you have heard this type of story? And finally, he came to the last prisoner. And this prisoner just kept quiet, bow, did not look up. And so the president asked this man, do you know me? And so this man said, yes, I know that you are the president of America and you are able to pardon me. And uh, this man said, you know that, Mr. President, if you pardon me, it is not because that I'm good, but it is because of your mercy and your goodness. Hello? We are saved not because we are good. We are saved because of his mercy and his love and his goodness. Amen? Amen? And so the president went to the warden and told the warden, he says that, since everybody told me that they are good, only one guy said that he's bad. So we better keep all the good people together here in prison and we take out the bad one because this bad one might influence the good one and the good one can become bad. You know? And so the last person got his pardon. How many of us are like that? We got our pardon, not because we are good, not because that we are righteous, but because He is righteous. Amen. And He pardoned us. Can somebody say amen? Are you glad that all your sin have already been forgiven? Do you have the peace of God today? Because you know that today I have this peace 
because all my sin are forgiven. And he remembered no more. You know, as soon as we start 2022, we start with a clean slate. Hallelujah. Brand new. You know, basically, peace means nothing broken, nothing missing, unbroken change. Back to original. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, give Jesus a clap offering. Secondly, that we have the peace of God because we know when the promises of God will come to pass. All right? We have the peace of God when we know the promises of God will come to pass. Now, let's go and let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 31 to verse 33. Now, when the angel appeared to Mary, so the angel told Mary, in Luke chapter 1, verse 30, 31 to verse 33. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and, he will, and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Now all the Jews, basically they know you know, they know the prophecy that God has already spoken in the past. You know, through the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. Uh, as well as the book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 2 to verse 5. All right, so this is the prophecy, the promise that God has already promised. So all the Jewish people, they knew you know, that the Messiah is going to come, you know, that he's going to be on the throne of David, you know, and he shall be great. So when Mary received this word from the angel, now Mary could have rejected, you know, Mary would have told God, he said that, who would believe? You know, I am a teenager and I am, you know, I'm a single, single lady. If I, when I get pregnant, who will believe that, you know, that, that the child is from you? But somehow, Mary had the peace because she knows that the promises of God will come to pass. Amen? There's nothing else to hang on sometimes. We only hang on to the promises of God. How many of you have been in that situation? I believe all of us have been in that situation, you know. No government can help us. No friends can help us. You know, no, not much, no amount of money can help us. Only God can help us. Amen. We have been there. Even for Joseph, you know that he is a righteous person, the Bible tells us. In the book of Matthew chapter 1, Verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follow after his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together and was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man. Everybody say just man. That means that you know that this man did nothing wrong. I mean, just man. That means that as far as God is concerned that, you know, that he did not sin. And not wanting to make hear her a public example who was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to, take to you Mary, your wife, for which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. It is the same thing that, you know, as the angel spoke to Mary, the angel now spoke to, you know, Joseph in the dream. And she will bring forth a son, for you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. Verse 22. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying. All right? And so the prophet has already spoken about the birth of Jesus Christ, about the Messiah coming. 
That's why we found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6, verse 7, and on Micah, chapter 5, verse 2 to verse 5. Can somebody say amen? Amen? You know, and so Joseph himself have to have an encounter with God, you know, and also, you know, to receive the promises of God that will come to pass. That's how both Mary and Joseph had a peace. Even though they might have to face people, obstacles, you know, people might not understand them, you know, that people might judge them, but because of the peace of God, they are able to go through. Can somebody say amen? Amen. How many of you believe that the promises of God is still yes and amen? Amen. And because that you believe that the promises of God will come to pass, you know, there is peace. How many of you, when you believe in the promises of God, you are still doubting? I'm sure we will not do that, right? If you are doubting, you are just like the book of James tells us, that, you know, we are just like tossed through and forth. We are unstable. At the end of the day, you get nothing. But when you, but when you believe, the peace of God will be there for you. Amen? You will know deep inside that yes, the promises of God is yes and amen and it shall come to pass. If you are sick, you know, you believe that by His stripe, I'm healed. Amen? You know, no doctors, sometimes doctors tell you all the symptoms that, you know, will terrify you. You know, you go back, you get nightmare. But when you believe the promises of God, you have good sleep. Amen? And you'll be at peace. And you know that everything is going well. And that's true. That's how, you know, the peace of God is so powerful to you and I. In the book of Philippians chapter 4, you know, as I saw Pastor, <coughs> Pastor Sam's uh, above Peace above all, below Pastor Sam put there, the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Around there, alright? And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Alright? So the peace of God which surpasses, everybody say surpasses. Surpasses what? All understanding. That means that you cannot understand it with your logical mind. You cannot explain it and you cannot dissect it. You just can't do that because it's supernatural, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. That means that any understanding that we have, you know, is not good enough. See, the peace of God, you cannot understand but you can know that it is there. It will guard your hearts and will guard your mind. You ask the theologian how to how do they explain it? It's very hard to explain. The only to explain is that I can say is that when you have the peace of God, you will uh, do like this. <sighs> Hello? How many of you have been there? No expression, but <sighs> no pressure. There's a release. Amen? That's the peace of God. You just cannot explain it. You know, but you know it. You know, it will guard your heart. That means that your heart will not be pumping like 110 kilometers an hour anymore. No more heart attack. Alright? Your mind will not cycle you. You know, this one correct or not, that one correct or not, which one to take uh, here or there, which direction. No. Your mind will become stable you will just know and God will continue to speak to you. Amen? So if you want to have, you know, to really receive the peace of God, you know, you go back to chapter 4, you know, basically starting from verse 5, verse 6, you know, firstly is to give thanks. Alright? The Bible says give thanks. So when we are thankful, then the Spirit of God, you know, will come and latch upon us because He appreciates that. When you are thankful, you know, that He will come and bless you. Just like Daniel said, you know, let's be, great. Let's be thankful, I think, on the 19th of 
December's message. You know, if you want to have peace, be thankful, be grateful. That's the starting point. Grateful to God for what He has given you. Grateful to God for what He has done for you. You know, as you continue on, then you can thank God for so many things. And ultimately, that you will receive this peace which surpasses all understanding. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Now, thirdly, that how do we know that we are the peace of God is that God is with us. In the book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear, the, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. God with us. Remember the disciples when they were in the boat in the book of in the book of Mark chapter 4, just now we have just read earlier, you know, that they were with Jesus in the boat and there was a great windstorm. And because of Jesus was with them, the windstorm had to cease. Amen? Hello? Are you there with me? Amen? Because God was with them. In the book of Judges, chapter 6, you know, this is where Jehovah Shammah was mentioned. Judges, chapter 6, verse 24. Okay, we read verse 23. Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. All right. Everybody say peace. All right. So peace be with you. Do not fear. That means that it minus the fear and you shall not die. Everybody say, I shall not die. <laughs> Amen. You will live to a ripe age that God wants you to live to. Amen. Because what happened was that, you know, that Gideon saw the angel and he was terrified. <laughs> you know, he was terrified. And he says that, why? You know, and now I have an encounter with the supernatural beings. You know, that he come in person. Now I can see him. You know, finish lah. That's why he said, alas, you know, finish. You know, I will go. You know, so the angel said, do not fear. You know, peace be with you. Do not fear. All right, and you shall not die. And so what happened was that Gideon built an altar and called the place Jehovah Shalom. Peace. Such a peace. Because they come to the ultimate, what you call it, uh, conversation, because God called Gideon, you know, to go and fight the enemy, the Midianites. And God you know, have been encouraging him. He says that, you know, that we, you are going to destroy your enemy. You and I shall become one man. That means all you need is me. When I am with you, you are victorious. Amen? You do not need to have so many people to come with you, actually. But all you need is me, God said. So ultimately, you know, that Gideon found out that God is with him. He has such a peace and he's able to go, you know, and had the warfare. Now, peace is so important, just like Pastor was saying. After the resurrection of Jesus, three times he greeted the disciples. He didn't say, hello, how are you? <laughs> right? He saw the disciples, you know, in the book of, in the book of John, towards the last, few chapter, last two chapters. You know, when Jesus saw the disciples, he said, that, peace be with you. Peace to you. Amen? The reason because now they are able to receive the peace that God has given to them. You know, it's in them now. That peace is so powerful that in the Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse, six, verse, uh, verse 16 or verse 17, Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16, now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. All right? Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace in all means. All right? 
always by all means. That means that in every circumstances, whatever place, whatever time that you are going through, you know that when you have difficult time, you know the peace of God is always available. How many of you believe that the peace of God is available for you? Amen? It's always available. You know, so imagine the peace now. Just imagine the peace. Every time when you think about the peace, think about when Jesus was in the boat. Windstorm came, but the peace was there. That means that your windstorm will have to go. Amen? When do we really need peace? When there's a storm. Most of us, amen? When we are in holiday mood, I don't think we want to. <laughs> we don't talk about peace, amen? When we are on holiday, go to Langkawi and all this stuff thing. Wow, you know, once open, everybody run away. All right, we don't talk about that. But when we are in windstorm, we really need the peace. And it is always available because God said, you know, now the Lord of peace himself will give you peace. Always he'll give you peace. Amen? And so receive this, you know, this morning as your inheritance, as the gift from God. As you start off 2022 and forever, you know, let the peace reign in your heart. Can somebody say amen? Amen. And lastly, God has a better plan for our lives. In the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 20, you know, the peace that we receive is not free. Somebody paid for it. Who paid for it? Jesus paid for it. By dollar and cent? By his blood. Colossians chapter 1 was was 20 and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him whether things on earth or things in heaven having made peace through the blood of the cross. So the peace that Jesus gave to us, it cost him his life. To reconcile back, us back to him so that he can use us. Can somebody say amen? Now I like the messenger Bible. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He is the supreme in the end. From beginning to the end, he's there. How many of us believe he's the Alpha and Omega? All right. Towering far above everything, everyone, so spacious is he, so expensive that everything of God finds its proper place. All right. Everybody say proper place. That is peace. To tie together, nothing broken. What else, huh? Nothing broken, nothing missing. Okay. <laughs> nothing broken, nothing missing. I'm broken change. Okay, so I'm still getting it. The everything fine is proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms. Wow. Can you imagine? <laughs> Powerful. God properly fixed and fit together. Only God can do that. Amen. To get all of us to be properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies. That means to come together, to be in one accord. All because of His death, His blood that poured down from the cross. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad that God can use you? How many of you want to be used by God? 
Amen? You know, the best, the best thing for us is that God used us. If God, you know, if you do not want to be used God by God, God can choose someone else. Simple as that. Amen? He has so many candidates. Just like Mary and Joseph, you know, they allow God to use them. And that's true. Now, if they reject God, God will just choose another vessel. Can God do that? Hello? Amen? God wants to use us because God has a better plan for our life. No, I thank God for Pastor Sam and Sister Sharini, you know, both pastors. I mean, from the, from the normal perspective, now they are engineers and they earn a lot of money. Hello? You know, but both of them gave up their profession to go into full time. I mean, you cannot figure it out. You know, spend so much money, go to university, you know, having a good career, having enough, you know, have, having money for the future to buy bungalow, to buy MERS, BMW, right? It's Pastor Sam? Changing color. Ah, he also smart, you know. <laughs> How many of you think that Pastor, you know, Sam and Sister Sherini just, uh, you know, give up for nothing? Because they knew God's plan is better than their own plan. I was called to the ministry when I was 24 years old. Now I'm already over 60. <laughs> Still look young. Yeah? Sometime, you know, that I sit down with my wife, you know, where the money all come from? I mean, that is, for full-time people, that's the only thing that we sit down and then sometimes we say, you know, other people, you know, sometimes it's just like, ah, let's go back. Let's go back and get a job. I could be earning more than what I'm getting. I could. But somehow, deep in us, especially those who are coined to full time, we know God has a better plan for our life. Our hopes, our dreams, you know, it become God's hope and God's dream. Now, there's a story about the three trees. How many of us have heard about the three trees? Okay, I just read to you the parable of the modern, the modern parable of the story of the three trees. Now, there were three trees on a wooded hill were discussing their hopes and dreams. The first tree said, Someday, I hope to be a treasure chest. People could fill me with gold, silver, and precious gems. They could decorate me with intricate carving, and everyone would see its beauty. The second tree says this, Someday, I'll become a mighty ship. I will take kings and queens across the sea and sail to unknown places. Everyone will feel safe because of the strength of my heart. Finally, the third tree said, I want to grow to be the tallest and the straightest tree in the forest. People will see me on top of a hill, look up to my branches and think of the heavens and God. They will remember me as the greatest tree of all time. So these three trees grew. All right, so after many years, they become big trees. So after years of praying that their dreams would come true, a group of woodsmen came upon the trees. One came to the first tree and said, this looks like a strong tree. I can sell this tree to the carpenter. After being cut down, the tree was happy because he knew that the carpenter would make him into a, into a treasure chest. That is his dream and his hope, okay, the first tree. And the second tree, a woodsman said, this looks like a strong tree. I can sell him to the shipyard. 
Or the second tree was happy because he knew he was on the way to become a mighty sheep. So when the woodsman came to the third tree, the tree was frightened because he knew that if they would cut him down, his dream <laughs> would not come true. All right, he wanted to continue to grow to be the strongest, straightest tree that points to heaven. So woodsman said, I don't need anything special from this tree, so I just take it back with me. When the, tr when the first tree arrive at the carpenters, they make it into a feeding box for the animals. That means the manger, all right? It was then placed in a barn and filled with hay. They cut the second tree and make it into a small fishing boat. They cut the third tree into large pieces and left it alone in the dark. Now the years went by and the trees forgot their dreams. Then one day, a man and a woman came to the barn. Guess who? Everybody said Mary and Joseph. She gave birth and they placed the baby in the feed box or the manger made from the first tree. The tree could feel the importance of this event and knew that it held the greatest treasure of all time. Amen? The greatest treasure of all time. Years later, a group of men got into the fishing boat made from the second tree. One man went to sleep. Guess who? Jesus. A great storm arose and the tree didn't think it was strong enough to keep the man safe. The man woke up from the, from work, the, man woke the sleeping man. He stood and said, be calm or be still. And the storm stopped. At this time, the tree knew it had carried the king of kings in his boats. Finally, someone came and got the third tree. It was carried through the streets and the people mocked the man who was carrying it. Later, they nailed the man to the tree and raised up to die at the top of the hill. And on the third day, the tree came to realize that it was strong enough to stand on top of the hill and be as close to God as possible. Jesus had been crucified on it. Now the moral of the story is that when things are not going our way, know that God has a plan for us. Amen? Know that God has a plan for us. Why? Because God still wants to bless you. You know, even better if you, if you allow God to use you. That's why in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall become sons of God. Amen. God wants to use us, you know, not necessarily to be in full time, but be a peacemaker. Can you be a peacemaker? Hello? Can you be a peacemaker? Because you already have the peace of God with you. God himself is our peace. Amen. He wants to use us, you know, as a vessel to be a peacemaker because we are called to be sons of God. Can somebody say amen? Remember when Jesus sent the disciples, you know, to enter the house to find a man of peace? He said that in Luke chapter 10, verse 5, verse 6, and verse 9, but whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, you'll return. Amen. That means that you know that you and I have this calling to be a peacemaker. That means that go to find a man of peace. And if the man of peace is there, you know, go in, you know, and eat with him. Rest, you know, and stay with him. And not only that, but God will release the power that needed, you know, for the situations. And heal the sick there and said to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. How many of you want to see the power of God at work? Amen. How many of you want to heal the sick? Raise the dead. Be a man of peace. Be a peacemaker. And so this year, to do great things, how many of us believe that we can do greater things? You know, peace above all. Do you have the peace that God wants to give to you? Amen. Jesus said, 
You know, in John chapter 14, verse 17, I was 27. Peace I leave with you, the peace I give you. How many of you are glad that this morning you can receive it? Amen. He's giving it to you and I. Hallelujah. And so we are going to go through 2022, you know, with the peace of God. Nothing can stop us, you know, from what God wants to do in our life and through our life. Come on, give Jesus a clap offering. Let's stand to our feet. And let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning that it is also the beginning of the year. And so in 2022, Lord, let the peace of God surpasses all understanding, the peace above all. Be our strength this year as we overcome any obstacle, whether it's the pandemic, whether it's jobs, whether it's health, whether it's closed doors, whatever situation it might be, it might be like a storm, but we know that the peace of God can, can steal it. And we know, Lord, that you have the answer. You know how to deal with the roots of the situations. Lord, that we surrender it to you. And we thank you, Lord, that this morning, Lord, that we can declare that you are Jehovah Shalom in our life. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.